Welcome to JSA TV, where we're covering the latest news, trends, and stories from within the digital infrastructure space and from thought leaders like the guy to my right. Uh, this is David Mettler. David is the EVP of Sales and Marketing for T5 Data Centers. And David, you're no stranger to, uh, to JSA TV. Uh, so let's have a little fun, shall we? That sounds great. All right, let's start with how's the show going for you? The show's great. I mean, it's funny. I think this is probably year 20 for me here at DC. I, going up and down the elevators, I just think about you know the, the years that have gone by that yes. I've been attending the show at this venue, and it's probably more crowded than, uh, than ever. Been, I've been saying that JSA TV viewers, I've been saying this for the last two days. I feel it. Yeah. I feel it. Yeah. And um, it's, it's probably in part, I believe it's probably in part, uh, because there are all of these other ancillary companies and innovators that sure. all to, uh, that that are coming coming forward to support the digital infrastructure industry. So there's just more of us. That's exactly right. If you look at the the floor, it's not just equipment vendors with their booths. Yeah, it's conversations from the whole ecosystem within the data center space. Uh, and it's, it's really quite dynamic. And it, it's a reflection of what's going on in the space, the, the strong demand component. And, and T5 is a, a key piece of that ecosystem. For our viewers that don't already know, maybe talk a little bit about T5. Sure, so T5 is, uh, we're, we like to say we're three businesses, one promise. We develop data centers, so we buy land and we build data centers and lease uh, powered shells and, and turnkey facilities to our customers. We construct data centers. We have a, a general contracting business where we build data centers from the ground up and have a whole portfolio of construction services we provide. And then we operate data centers. Uh, so we operate data centers for our development business and we operate data centers for our third party customers, both in the U.S. and in Europe. And we're we're growing across all three lines of business. We're growing like uh, like crazy right now. Um, and it's it's a, it's exciting because we're seeing demand across there's really three customer segments that we serve. So we service the hyperscale community and across all the hyperscale customers where, you know, we're working with them uh, through our three lines of businesses. We service developers and investors. So as more and more uh, new entrants come into the space, whether they have land and power or capital, and they're looking for partners who have credibility and expertise, uh, you know, we've been, we've been able to step in and, and support them. And we've been servicing uh, the enterprise space. I think of them as sort of like, Fortune 100 companies, you know, mm -hmm. large retailers, mm -hmm. uh, financial services firms, um, and other technology providers who may still retain data center assets, mm -hmm. and they need partners who can operate those assets and, and and help maintain them and ensure that they're prepared for the next generation of IT infrastructure that's going into them. David, if there were a middle to this ecosystem, I feel like DeFi <laughs> probably sits somewhere right in the middle you know, there. It's actually very unique. I mean, we're the only company that is structured the way that we are. Yeah. And it, it grew about organically, but we've kind of reached this escape velocity where each of the lines of business is sustaining in and of themselves. But when you integrate them together, it's really powerful for uh, for the delivery and the solutions we can present to our customers. It does feel like you would be highly capable of providing more of a con uh, consultative uh, uh, approach across all three of those of those lines. Well, the big the big thing that we like to say is we think and we act like owners because we are owners. So when our when our development business buys property and when we build for ourselves, the construction and the operations business lines they support. The, the company because yeah. you know they they own that they own the infrastructure they're part of it and when we go to our customers who own their own data center assets we know what their expectations are we know what their customers expectations are when and you know it's like it's sometimes simple things but there are things that make a big difference yes. one is just the way you communicate transparently right showing them what your costs are and showing them what your fees are in a very transparent way uh, communicating expectations around schedule and budget. And these are things that we just do inherently because we know how important it is for ourselves and we know that our customers will expect that as well. All right, let's talk challenges sure. because there's plenty of those as well, yeah. uh, specifically around capacity. Sure. Uh, I, I'm sure you are not immune to the challenges around capacity. You want to talk about uh, ab about how you address uh, capacity issues? Well, I mean, you think about capacity across the full spectrum, right? Mm -hmm. There's there's power capacity constraints, there's supply chain capacity Right. And then there's resource capacity, hiring people. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I mean, every day we're we're looking to solve any one of those for ourselves and for our customers uh, as we look to, de to deliver data center capacity. I think the um, on the resource side, uh, you know, there, there's a, a, a fundamental competition for really good talent. 
And so you're the first to say that. And, 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 and it's been something that's kind of in the back of JSA's mind all the time. Are you like, kidding? Or is that, are, is no, that I'm not kidding. I'm you. the first to say that like okay. next gen, the next gen workforce and making sure that we've got well qualified, maybe even passionate yeah. uh, a, a workforce is very, very important right now. I don't think we talk enough about it. I mean, JSA does certainly, but yeah. um, you're the first to mention it in the seat today. Well, it's, it's incredibly important as you know, as we think about the growth of our businesses, it's, it's about having really good people who understand the vision and they are aligned on the services that we offer to meet schedule budget and de-risk the execution for our customers. That's it. And the, uh, you know, we, we think about it in a couple of dimensions. I mean, first you've got recruiting, right? Because of the, the fact we've been, we've been doing this for nearly 20 years, mm -hmm. we have deep recruitment channels across the country. Uh, then it's about onboarding. So you get, you know, you get the right people and you bring them on, you train them and you, you put them in a position to succeed from the, from day one. Mm -hmm. And then it's about really extending the culture not just within say the, the corporate headquarters space, but extending the culture to the field. And we're very intentional about how we do that. And we're always thinking about how can we ensure that we, we call it the magnetic culture of excellence. And the idea of magnetic is that it's actually, it's attractive, right? It attracts people you, to you're us. You're such a good marketer. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I, yeah, yeah. I'm trying. I love it. I love it. <laughs> but the magnetism is, yeah. you know, I'd like to think it's real, right? There's an attractiveness both to people, to us, and to us, to our customers. Uh -huh. And so, you know, being thoughtful about it and intentional about, hey, how do we extend the culture to new people who, as we grow, we're, we're hiring new people. How do we extend the culture? How do we make them feel like they're really part of it? And how do we, uh, you know, how do we retain? Those are things that are on our mind every day. You've been in the, you've been doing this for 20 years. Mm -hmm. How has AI, nobody, nobody leaves the hot seat without sure, talking about sure. AI. Yeah. How has AI kind of fundamentally changed or, or presented challenges to you and how are you addressing those? Yeah, it's, I mean, in, in a number of ways. I, I think first and foremost, AI widened the aperture for where data centers could be built, right? You weren't, no longer are you just constrained to the primary data center market. So we saw that the primary data center markets were just getting bigger and uh -huh. bigger, right? And power was being constrained. And now AI said, hey, you know what? We can be outside of those primary markets, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so that's one thing. I think the second thing is from a power density perspective, right? AI is driving more dense data center uh, mm -hmm. development. And look, I mean, it's one of the challenge, when you talk about challenge, out at GTC last week, uh, you know, the CEO of NVIDIA said, we're gonna see in two years, 600 kilowatts of capital. You are not the first person to say that in I'm this sure, seat. No, right? it, I know, it blew and, my mind. Right, and, and, and you know, spe speaking with the team uh, from NVIDIA out there, they said, yeah, we're, you know, we, we're trying to figure out exactly what that's gonna, what's gonna look like in implementation and execution, yeah. right? And so for us, we're trying to make sure that we understand our customers' requirements, that we can be flexible with our delivery models, and so that we can, you know, we can accommodate. Because now it's not just, hey, here's a specific design that everybody's going to. It's we need to be able to meet design requirements as they're expanding yeah. and changing. And it's, you know, like I said, it's dynamic.